Hari Om everybody. Um, today we start a second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Um, this is the second largest chapter in the Gita. The largest is chapter 18. It has 78 verses and this one has 72 verses. Um, chapter 2 is actually um, the entire teaching of the Bhagavad Gita is in chapter 2. So actually, if Arjun would have understood, because the entire teaching is there, uh, there would not have been any need for chapter 3 onwards. But Arjun had a question and probably Bhagwan instigated that question in his mind, keeping us in mind. That if Arjun understands, <laughs> in Kali Yuga, people are not going to understand. So I better make Arjun ask some question and elaborate this chapter further. And that's the reason uh, we have ended up with 18 chapters. As we go on in this chapter, we will find that the seeds of the rest of the chapters are in this, this particular chapter. So there'll be one verse and I will point out that this is the seed for this chapter. This is the seed for this chapter. This is, so all the seeds are there in this. So every aspect of the teaching of Bhagavad Gita has been mentioned in this chapter. So gunas have been mentioned. Karma has been mentioned. Jnana, of course, for in full measure. So the, all the aspects have been mentioned, but only in seed form. And then they are later on elaborated. We just heard chapter 14 from Swami Ishwananji. So that's the Gunatraya Vibhaga Yoga, the three gunas. And here in this chapter, you will hear Bhagwan telling Arjun, Nistray Gunyo Bhava Arjuna. Transcend the gunas. That's all he says. But he doesn't explain. So that's why 14th chapter comes. What, what do you mean? What are the gunas then? How do I transcend? What is the characteristics of a gunatita person? So all that details come in 14. Seed is here. So this is how chapter 2 is. Most beautiful chapter. And it begins with Sanjay Uacha. Let's read the verse. And then we'll see uh, why, why the verse is even there. Because every verse in the Bhagavad Gita has its own purpose, has its own placement. Um, there is no extra word that, oh, Bhagavan just knew the word, so he used. And there is no word um, that is less. Like it, it, all the words are required. This is how the beauty is of Bhagavad Gita. Atha dvitiyo dhyayaha sanjayo vacha tam tatha kripaya vishtam ashrupurna kulekshanam vishidantamidam vakyam vacha madhusudanaha. Sanjay said, to him who was thus overcome with pity and despondency, with eyes full of tears and agitated, Madhusudana, the destroyer of Madhu, spoke these words. The first thing to think about in this verse is that, if you remember, just last Sunday, we discussed verse 47 of chapter 1. That also was Sanjay Watcher. And it was Eva Muktva Arjuna, Sankhe Rathopasta Upavishata, Visrajyam Sasharam Chapam, Shoka Samvigna Manasaha. So it was Sanjay describing Arjuna's condition at the end of chapter one, uh, telling Dhritarashtra that uh, such a, uh, a person drowned in sorrow is now sitting with his bow and arrow fallen on the floor of the chariot. And as I've already told you in the Mahabharata, there was no chapter. So Sanjay watched, there would be two verses and whoever, I mean, Madhusudan Saraswati ji, and he did the chapters, he could have actually put this verse with the, as 48 verse of chapter one, and then begun chapter two with Bhagavan Vacha. So why has he given the break between two verses from the same person? That's what we need to know. Like, why is the break there? Like, it's the same person speaking. Why not complete his dialogue and then complete the chapter and then start with Bhagavan Vacha? 
so to understand why this break because now the uh, great spiritual master has done it so he cannot do it without any kind of purpose in mind he cannot just do it oh i think well, let's break this thing here not like that so to understand the purpose of the placement of this verse see every verse placement also is correct to understand this we need to understand the purpose why sanjay is telling dhritarashtra there are two pairs here one pair is bhagwan and arjun and originally it was told by bhagwan to arjun there was no sanjay in there and no dhritarashtra in there it was only just bhagwan and arjun on the battlefield and bhagwan was telling and the reason for bhagwan to tell arjun was to remove his delusion we have seen in chapter 1 how totally deluded arjun had become he had reached a state of tamas and bhagwan had to remove that because he, he, bhagwan wanted him to fight if bhagwan had wanted him to you know if bhagwan thought that was all the correct emotion and all bhagwan would say okay you and me both let's walk out but bhagwan never said that bhagwan never said anything actually in first chapter so the purpose behind bhagwan's talking was to remove delusion now the purpose there is there should be some purpose why we are listening to this too and we are studying for us there are various purposes so depending on the maturity of the student here the stu means us student could be looking for liberation gita will give liberation student could be looking only for peace of mind gita will give peace of mind student might be looking only for how to do action you know i have little children i have coworkers i have a business to run i have work to do uh, i have family how do how do i deal with them etc etc even that gita will give so at all levels gita will give you the training at the very lowest level what do i do in this situation gita will tell you how to behave in any ordinary situation in our life bhagavad gita will tell you so bhagavad gita has a great purpose so for us wherever we are on the ladder we take that for bhagavad gita from bhagavad gita now what is the purpose of sanjay telling dhritarashtra was he trying to enlighten dhritarashtra no was dhritarashtra deluded yes he was totally deluded to such an extent that it was not possible for sanjay to bring him out of that delusion even if sanjay would have tried even bhagwan could not have brought out, brought dhritarashtra out of delusion so there is no question of sanjay trying to do that so the only purpose that sanjay is telling dhritarashtra this is to answer his question verse number 1 in chapter 1 which on the surface looked extremely simple then so what was the question what are my children and pandavas doing on the battlefield of kurukshetra i already explained to you that it looked like a it 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 appears as it's a very very simple question but it wasn't that simple because he was getting all the reports so it couldn't have been that he was asking um sanjay what is happening the essence of that question was what has happened that bhishma has fallen because the question was asked on the 10th day of the war it was not asked on the first day so the import the real import of that question is what how come bhishma fell when i had done everything in my power to demoralize arjun and i did see arjun was crying and you know arjun had thrown his bow and arrow so whatever i did whatever manipulation that i did had worked and yet i see that now bhishma has fallen now he you know so the purpose of sanjay's narration is to give a report that's it it is not to enlighten dhritarashtra it is not to remove his delusion it is not to even give him peace of mind it is not to give him any kind of karma directions nothing it is only a report and so sanjay is only a reporter he is only reporting however we must understand that this report is absolutely correct and to the point because it is sanjay and sanjay has been blessed by bhagwan veer vyas so you know it, report, we see reporters reporting news in the this it could be biased the report could be biased but with sanjay it wasn't like that so he was actually reporting why bhishma had fallen what was it that arjun 
came back, uh, his inspiration came back. So when a report is being told, in between, in between, the reporter will make sure that the listener wants to listen further. Because it's only a report. It's only a report. It's, it, it's somewhat like me asking you, okay, we finished chapter one. Do you guys want to go into chapter two? Or shall we just stop here? And then if you say, yeah, please, let's go. Then I go. Otherwise, I don't go. So it's Sanjay's position is like that. And to indicate that, this split has been made. So it ends with Sanjay telling Dhritarashtra that uh, Arjun is now uh, completely demoralized and he's crying and this thing, this thing, this thing. Chapter ends and Sanjay repeats. Because if you see this verse, it's kind of a repeat thing. He says, oh, to such an Arjun who was already sitting there crying, uh, Kripaya Vishta, he's completely overpowered by compassion, which already Karpaya Paraya Vishta, he had already said that. He says, to such an Arjun who was uh, overpowered by compassion and Ashru Purna collection, with full eyes full of tears, crying, one who was completely has drowned in sorrow to such an Arjun, Madhusudana said these words. So what it means is, do you want me to continue? It's a repeat, it's a, he's repeating his own words here in different words, but the uh, essence is the same. Like in chapter one, he said, Arjun is sitting, is crying this thing. Now again, he's saying to such an Arjun who is crying and who is drowned in sorrow and who is overcome by compassion, Madhusudana said these words. So the placement of this verse here in the beginning of chapter two is to tell us that Sanjay is asking permission of Dhritarashtra, do you want me to continue? Because you don't want to get enlightened or anything. You want a report. Do you want the report further? Or are you, now you understood what happened to why Bhishma fell. And Dhritarashtra doesn't say anything, which means he wants him to continue. And that's why this placement here is important to be understood. So the, Word the uh, words are pretty simple with pity and despondency, with eyes full of tears and agitated. Obviously, all this Madhusudana. Now, here the word Madhusudana is to be understood in a little bit more detail. We have already come across this word. Sudana is to kill. Madhu is the name of the demon. So Madhu, uh, that is one meaning, the killer of the demon Madhu. But in Durga Puran, there is a story. Madhu and Kaitaba were two demons that came out of the dirt of the years of Bhagwan Vishnu. Okay, Karana Mala. I'll tell you the story and then I'll tell you the subjective meaning of it because the story seems pretty silly. Anyway, so from the dirt of the years of Bhagwan Vishnu came out two demons. One was Madhu, one was Kaitaba. Then this Madhu and Kaitaba, they themselves wanted to eat Vishnu. They wanted to devour Bhagwan Vishnu. So Bhagwan Vishnu had to fight with them. And it is said that he had to fight for 5,000 years. Now imagine if Bhagwan had to fight for 5,000 years, how powerful these two demons must have been. But ultimately he did kill them. And that is how the story goes. And that is how he got the name Madhusudana. This name will come over and over again. But anyway, that is the thing. Now, what is the subjective understanding of this uh, story? So Madhu and Sudhana, the Madhu and Kaitaba, Madhu, Madha, Madhu is honey. One meaning of Madhu is honey. And honey is something which we like, we get attached to. So Madhu, the demon Madhu represents attachment. And Kaitaba represents aversion. So it's likes and dislikes. That is how these two demons, they are our demons. That's why Bhagavad Gita will constantly say, rise above likes and lies. Right? They are the two demons that are keeping us in this world. So Madhu and Kaitaba are this Raga and Dvesha, which is likes and dislikes or attachment and aversion. They 
the significance of them coming out of the dirt of the karna mala the dirt of the years of bhagwan vishnu is that likes and dislikes arise in our mind by what we have heard what happens is i hear something good about somebody i start liking that person i hear something bad about somebody i start disliking that person so the first thing for us to do is that when we hear something about somebody we must never make a judgment call on what we have heard from somebody else that is the importance of this karana mala why karana why hear? because hearing itself gives us likes and dislikes even the, uh, a persons is one thing but even places you know oh hey i saw this place i tell you such a fabulous place immediately you have the thing otherwise are what movie are horrible good you didn't come waste of money then it will come so even for objects it happens so this is we are talking specifically of people now the thing is that i i should not make a decision based on what i hear alone means i should make my own evaluation of the person and i should make my own judgment and then the second the other thing is that you may for first principle here is don't hear anything don't gossip about anybody we should also not tell anything about other people to others and we should also try not to listen or not to encourage you know what happens is somebody tries to tell you are you really this is what happened how did it happen you know you can continue that conversation or you can show oh really oh, okay so that the other person is not encouraged so when you are being told something and if it is being told about some person don't encourage that unless it is required for your you know like it's a work situation it's like that's different i'm talking they say that there are three kinds of people in this world and the the lowest kind of people the third rate people they talk about other people so when two people meet or phone immediately the topic of conversation is a and b meet topic of conversation is person c when the topic of conversation is some other person these two people they are at the lowest rank of the ladder the middle people they will talk events ah trump capital there was attack on capital hill there was pandemic vaccine this is a second second rung of the ladder they will they will not talk of people but they'll talk of events and the highest people only talk of spirituality tattva tattva bibi tattva vichar so so these are the type. so when we if if we the first thing is try not to hear about anything anybody but it is possible that you are in a position where you have to hear things then in that case first thing is never pass it on anything bad do not pass it on to anybody else keep it to yourself and second thing is don't yet make a judgment call based on that based on what you've heard you you try and test the person yourself if you want to there's no need there's actually for spiritual seekers there's no need let that person be good let that person be bad we only have to pay attention to our own mind and try to evolve so that is the uh significance of that word madhusudan that is the significance of the story that they came. and and bhagwan vishnu took 5000 years means it is very difficult for us to get out of likes and dislikes once i get attached to something i am so fanatic about it and that's why over and over and over again bhagavad gita bhagwan will say rise about likes and dislikes rise about likes and dislikes rise about so it's not a question that this yesterday bhag um, swami ishwani ji said that gunati the purusha doesn't mean that he doesn't uh, feel the sorrow it, it's it, he feels the emotion but he doesn't get carried away by it so i can i i can hear i because that's why don't one thing is don't initiate a conversation about other people first thing that is in our hands right if i meet some other person i don't have to in okay you know how, how is that if that person is sick or something and you ask that's a totally different matter you know that's 
I'm not talking of that. Like even Swamiji asked me about how Mr. Kappa is doing. That is, a, that is not gossip. That is asking for some fact. But don't initiate. And if the other person initiates, don't encourage. Don't encourage that other person to talk. And if the person still goes on talk, either you try and change the subject or then you keep it to yourself. And that is what we have to learn from Bhagwan Shivji drinking that poison. In the churning of the milky ocean, when halahal came out, that was for then devas also didn't want, asuras also didn't want. Then they went to Bhagwan Shivji. They said, we, we don't want, we can't drop it on the floor either. So, so he drank it, but he held it in the neck. And the, the thing is, the significance of that is that when you hear negative about somebody else, don't let it go into your stomach because it will, it will, the poison will destroy. It's poison, the negative thing that you hear. But at the same time, don't spit it out. Either means don't tell third, uh, fourth person. Now A and B talked about C. Now A goes and talks to D. Don't give it out either. Keep it here. Means don't get it, let it go into your, deep into your psyche either. But at the same time, don't spill it out either. That is the significance of that Neel Kantha. Bhagwan Shivji is known as Neel Kavai because his neck became blue because he held that halal right in his neck without letting it go into the stomach and without spitting it out either. And that's what we have to do with whatever gossip or whatever we hear about other people. Keep it there. Keep it in your throat. Don't take it into heart. Don't spill it. Okay. So that is the significance of this word Madhusudana. Now we see Bhagwan opening his mouth. Okay, first time. First, well, he did a little bit of, he said, these are the kurus, but that was not that much. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Kutastva Kashmalamidam Vishame Samupasthitam Anarya Jushtama Swargyam Akirti Karam Arjuna. The Blessed Lord said, Whence is this perilous condition come upon thee, this dejection, un Aryan like, heaven excluding, disgraceful, O Arjuna? So, Bhagavan Uacha, I have explained Bhagavan once before, I'll quickly go over it. Why Bhagavan Uacha? Why not Sri Krishna Uacha? Why not Sri Govind Uacha? There are so many names of Bhagavan, Vasudeva, this, that. Why not that? Gopal. Bhagavan, Bhaga, Vaan is possessor, like Balavan, Dhanavan, etc. And he is the possessor of Bhaga. And Bhaga is the six-fold um, wealth, six-fold wealth, 100%, 100% of the time. And the six-fold wealth is Aishwarya, Yasha, Shri, Dharma, Vairagya, and Jnana. Aishwarya, complete lordship, Yasha, uh, fame and success, Shri, prosperity, Dharma, righteousness, Vairagya, dispassion, and Jnana is moksha or mukti. So all these he has in 100% hundred, hundred uh, uh, quantity and 100% of the time. We may see some people having some of it or all of it maybe, but only for some time. Very few. I don't think there is any human, unless it's a realized master. But all of it to have in measure, and that's why this Bhagavan word becomes the word becomes very important. Possessor of Bhaga, and also it indicates that his words were true at that time. They are true today, and they will remain true five thousand years, ten thousand million years after this. They will remain true. They are true in all three periods of time, past present and future. And they are true for every single human being. Bhagavad Gita is not meant for animals. It cannot be taught to animals and it's not meant. It's only meant for humans. If you consider yourself to be a human being, Bhagavad Gita is meant for you. Okay. So it's not for Hindus. It's not for, you know, only Indians, nothing like that. So that's the significance, the load of the word Bhagavan, Sri Bhagavan Vacha. Now we see here that Bhagwan is not saying, yo, my baby, Pavam, you're crying. Here, another hanky. I learned the word Pavam from Swami Advayananda, by the way. I believe it's Tamil. And in Marathi, it's Papa, a poor thing. In English, poor thing. So Pavam, 
<laughs> Bhagwan is not saying Atma. <laughs> no Bhagwan instead is saying, and this is not even I. If if you were to imagine, you know, this is a history recorded. Okay, it's not a story. So you can say Bhagwan like getting. <laughs> Where from has this come? Not like, where from has this come, my baby? No, no baby. So he says, where from? Kashmalam idam. This Kashmala is dirt. Kashmala is great dirt. Great, where has this greatest dirt come in your mind? Vishwami, Samopastitam. This condition at this wrong time, wrong place, you're standing on the battlefield. And this is not a place for crying. And you're crying. So where has this great dirt come from? Kashmalam is it's absolute dirt. Mala is only dirt. Kashmalam. And Anarya. So Anarya. Arya is the meaning is noble person. A noble person. If you've seen the serial Mahabharata or Ramayana, the women call their husband Arya. They call them by name Arya. So what is a noble person? So the noble person is one, first thing, is one who knows his duties, what his duties are. Second, he performs his duties. See, there are two things, knowledge and performance, knowledge and action. Unless knowledge and action go together, the result will not come. So I can have the knowledge of something, but if I don't do that, there will be no result. I'm willing to do it, but I don't have the knowledge, then also result will not come. So Arya is one who you have to first know your duty to perform it. If you don't even know what your duty is, how will you perform? So no duty perform. And the third condition is performance only for purification of mind, not out of you know doership. See, I'm so great. I did this and I did that. No. That makes it Arya. Now, Bhagwan is saying, you are not behaving like a noble person. Why? Because your duty as a Kshatriya is to fight and now you want to run away from the war. So your Jushtam is behavior. So Anarya Jushtam means your behavior is un-Arya, uh, un UN, uh, not an-Arya, it's un-Arya. So it's not like a noble person because you it doesn't look it looks like you've forgotten what your duty is and then you don't want to perform it and forget where's the question of purification of mind when you don't even want to do the duty so your behavior is anarya aswargyam so it is said in the shastras that if you just perform you know and bhagwan himself will it will come in later on in chapter two if we were to just perform our duties and not do anything else heaven is guaranteed means our evolved birth is guaranteed so he says even that you're not going to get because you're not performing your duty so i have what did you say heaven excluding that means you're not going to get heaven and a kirti a kirti is fame a kirti is uh, no fame means you will be defamed because you have walked away from the greatest war of your life now even though you have won, I told, I told you, Arjun had never lost a war in his whole life. So all your life, you have not lost a war. So you have got that great fame, but even that much great fame cannot uh, compensate for this one mistake. Like this mistake is so huge now, it's going to be so huge that you're running away. All that previous fame is going to get washed away. You know, we see, I was thinking about this. You do, you know, you do 10 good things for a person. And suppose the 11th thing is not very good. They forget the first 10 things that you have done. They only remember that 11th thing. You did this bad. So this is what Bhagwan is telling him. That you, everybody will forget whatever you did in the past. And they're going to say you're that arjun arjun ran. that's the one that ran away that's the one that ran away from the war that is all you're going to get from this i remember the story of uh, hanuanji you see ravana was also very undefeated but wali you know sugriv's brother had defeated him once in one war it comes in ramayana tulsi ramayana so when hanumanji go, goes taking the message of sri ram to sri lanka to his court ravan in his arrogance says do you know who i am 
you know who I am. He says, yeah, aren't you the one that Wally defeated? <laughs> this is how far the one is. Hey, yeah, isn't that the one you are? Because Ravana is asking about arrogance. Don't you know who I am? I'm so famous. Yeah, you are Wally defeated you. So this is what happened to Arjun. Arjun, oh, that's the one that guy ran away, that one. So forget all the previous things. So Bhagwan is what is Bhagwan is not at all sympathetic. Please take note this point down. Okay. Next verse, even worse. And the purpose for these two verses of Bhagwan, because Bhagwan's job now was to bring Arjun from Tamas into Rajas. Yesterday only Swamiji said, you can't go from Tamas into Sattva. Tamas to Rajas, Rajas to Sattva. He had to actually ultimately bring uh, Arjun into Sattva because that's where he would have understood the uh, message clearly. But he's in Tamas and he cannot bring him into Sattva. So he's bringing him into Rajas and we'll see how, how it happens. Klaibhyam masmagama partha naitatvaya papadhyate shudram rudaya daurbalyam Yield not to impotence, O Partha. It does not befit thee. Cast off this mean weakness of heart. Stand up, O scorcherer of foes. Klaibhyam. This is like even Guru, Gurudev has written. It is a shock treatment. So when a person is hysterical, and Arjun was hysterical, what is needed is to bring that hysteria down. Because you know, when he is going, ah, like, how can you talk to such a person? So that person has to be calmed down. And to calm down modern psychiatrists, they would give shock treatment. Or it is like a slap in the face. Here Bhagwan is calling, calling him a kliva. Kliva is a eunuch. Now there is a story behind this. So when the Pandavas were in, um, exile for 12 years, Bhagwan had already told the Pandavas that don't think that this is your rest period or you can just, you know, waste away your time. You have to prepare for war because there is going to be a war and a very great one at that. So, and all of you have to be, you know, be prepared. And especially Arjun, he told, he tells Arjun, you have to go to Swargaloka, to heavens, to Indra's abode and learn all the warfare, all the weapons of Indra, you have to learn. So for that, uh, Arjun goes to the heavens. He is learning. I, I mean, he's studying all this warfare, all the different weapons. And there is this Apsara, the beautiful lady, uh, uh, Urvashi. Urvashi falls in love with Arjun because I told you Arjun was very handsome. He was very vir virile. He was very, you know, brave, etc., etc. I've told you all that. So up, this Apsara Urvashi fa falls in love with Arjun, and Arjun refuses her, saying that you are a bhogavasu, you are an object of enjoyment for my father. So you are like my mother. He says, I can't think of you know responding to your love and. Urvashi gets really angry because she says, any man who looks upon me means I am so beautiful as a mother has to be impotent. So you will be impotent for the rest of your life. She curses him. And Arjun says, I'm willing to take the curse, but I shall not mate with you. And that brings her anger down. She understands. So she, she regrets, but then a curse when it is given out, it can never be taken back. So she goes to Indra and she says, I know I have made a mistake. What do I do? So Indra says, no, you can't take the curse back, but you can restrict the period of that curse. And you can also give him the choice to select that period in his life whenever. So she reduces it to one year and she tells Arjun that whenever you want, whenever it is convenient to you, you take on this role of a unit. And it becomes, it comes in very, very handy when they have to go incognito. That's when Arjun, you, the curse becomes a blessing actually. Because if Arjun had remained as Arjun, it would have been very difficult to hide his uh, personality. So he becomes Brahannala and he becomes the dance and song teacher of the daughter of King Virat, where they had taken refuge. So this portion of his life, this becoming eunuch, the Pandavas knew and only Bhagwan knew because Bhagwan knows everything. Now Bhagwan is mentioning that Arjun, that period is over. 
why are you taking it on again you want to take it on again you want to be a eunuch again urvashi's curse you want to relive it again <laughs> this is what bhagwan is taunting him here that's why this mention of klebya mas magama partha is not poor baby no 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 kshudram hrdaya doch kshudram very this weakness of the heart now look at this also arjun is the same and he is emoting whatever that he is emoting his whatever you know hysteria sanjay is looking at him and sanjay is what did sanjay say kropaya paraya avishta o oh, oh, baby is overpowered by compassion and bhagwan is looking at him and bhagwan what is he saying weakness of the heart where have you, where has this come from so when a teacher looks at a disciple the eyes are totally different because the teacher wants to make a teacher out of that disciple and any kind of weakness that the disciple exhibits the teacher is not going to tolerate it absolutely not and this was a wrong it was absolutely wrong so sanjay being biased like he looks at it differently bhagwan is looking at it totally in the opposite way okay krikshadram vyakto paranta pap you are a scorcher i told you even he didn't even have to appear in front of his enemies he had to be somewhere far away and he will pull the string of his gandiv they would hear this <laughs> oh my god is arjun and half their power is gone that that power he had and now he is crying and bhagwan is not going to tolerate that's why bhagwan is reminding him who are you you are a parantapa you are a scorcher or a fool what are you doing what are you doing this is what the, this is and these two verses are meant only for him to come from tamas into rajas in our ordinary now in this case this was a particular case where this was happening but there was a question how to in our day to day life it will come in chapter 3 but i'll tell you because the question was asked the other day in our ordinary life if a person is lazy indolent because that is the thing of tamas you know you have to give him a carrot you know there is a see there is one is motivation one is inspiration motivation is outside inspiration is within now if the person in ordinary life is this thing then you know like for children we used to do na you will get one golden star you do your homework then you get two gold <laughs> i've done it you know you get then if you have five golden stars then then you you get this treat or you get to watch a movie or you get to play a video so there is that's a carrot you know there's motivation so one way of bringing a person from tamas into rajas because don't try to bring him into sattva that's not possible is the carrot so motivation outside motivate you'll get a promotion in in work if you do this much then you get promoted you this thing you this thing whatever and if there is inspiration no carrot is required no external motivation is required so the spiritual master will always inspire he never shows a carrot that's why you never get a oh thank you so much you are taking mission classes nobody is going to say thank you why because thank you is a motivation expectation is out of your own inspiration out of your own attitude of service to the guru we have to do it we as teachers that is a, no 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 of course we do say thank you to swami ji when they come vote of time but that's you know this thing his guru we are saying that to swami ji swami ji's guru is not saying thank you to swami ji nobody is saying thank you okay so there is inspiration and there is motivation so in the ordinary world you would use motivation in this uh, in this case he is um bringing him out by shock treatment and calling him a eunuch would even have a greater impact and we see that it does have an impact than slapping him across the face that also would be a thing you know if somebody is like getting too hysterical you can do that but in this case arjun um, uh, he he was and we see that arjun has now come back into um, rajas because now arjun is speaking okay because tamas he wasn't even speaking now he's speaking any questions before i go further all okay all right arjuna uvacha 
कथम भीष्मम संखे द्रोणम च मधुसूदन इशु भी प्रतियोत्मी पूजारहावरी सूदन पूजारहारवरी सूदन अर्जुन सेड O Madhusudana, shall I in battle fight with arrows against Bhishma and Drona, who are fit to be worshipped, O destroyer of enemies? So the the thing to understand here is that Arjun has now started speaking again, which means he's slowly coming back into rajas. How do we know that he's not in sattva but he's in rajas? Because he's talking, but he's talking the wrong things. just like duryodhan was talking in the first chapter it was all incorrect incorrect placement here the placement is correct and what arjun is doing here now in these verses next three four verses is that he is answering the questions that bhagwan objections that bhagwan has put forth now here let's see these to um, first of all he's called him anari his behavior he said anari so he has to explain his behavior uh which bhagwan is saying it's not that of a noble person number 1 aswargyam that means he won't get heaven so of course those two are connected and then akirtikaram fame that also uh, bhagwan says you will get ill fame you'll be defamed if you walk out and then bhagwan is saying radai darbalyan like where is this weakness so is this a weakness of the heart is it compassion what it is so these are the objections that now arjun is going to answer but his answers are not uh, correct and that's why we know he's in rajas so now arjun has come into rajas so he says now first thing here is madhusudana and ari sudana so these both these names are of bhagwan and if you see sudana sudana madhusudana destroyer of madhu demon or destroy this thing ari is enemy so destroyer of demon destroyer of ari means the meaning of both words is the same so those who look at this book from a literary point of view they say this is a mistake this is what they say but we are not studying it for literary and even literary it's okay because when a person is trying when a person is very emotional you must you must notice it i mean i know people they'll say my name four times in two sentences oh jaya da 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 jaya oh ja da 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 jaya oh da da again jaya so when a person is very emotional he will repeat the names and that's what is indicated here by these two names being repeated by arjun madhusudana and ari sudana they mean exactly the same things so he says how the how should i fight means how should i shoot arrows with bhishma and uh, bhishma aham sakhe dronam and dronacharya my teacher and my grandfather who are pujar have har pujar ha pujar ha means they are worthy of worship so he is already he was already looking at them as grandfather and guru not as enemies right, that we have established and now he says they are they are great people they are worthy of being worshiped and on such people you are asking me to shoot arrows to such people so he says so bhagwan said where from this dirt has come here he is saying this is the place from where i should be withdrawing if i'm just if he was just in his palace there is nothing to withdraw na now he is facing war he is on the battlefield he is facing the enemy he says this is where from the dirt has come this is not the wrong place this is the right place this is only from where i can withdraw like not shoot arrows this is what he is explaining okay because they are worthy of worship why are they worthy of worship is because bhishma of course we know he was the pitamaha the great grand sire of the kuru family he was the one that had protected the throne for so many years he had fought all the battles till the pandavas and uh, you know duryodhan and all they grew up 
he was the one because Dhritarashtra Pandu was there, but once he left and then he went into the forest and then he died. The blind king cannot go to war and all that. So all the wars were, were being fought by uh, uh, Bhishmacharya and then he was the one that was bringing in all the wealth and everything. Then Dronacharya is such a great teacher. He was a great, great teacher who was this thing. So teacher too is, of course, he is worthy of worship only teacher, right? So that's why he's saying that these people are worthy of worship. How can I shoot arrows at them? And that is what you can shoot arrows at them, Arjun, because they are standing on the side of Adharma. That he has forgotten. He is, that is, he says they are worshipful. And now he goes, and now we see there is a change in meter, and this change in meter indicates his emotional state. When we when we are crying or when we are very emotional, then our speech is not very clear. Now we are sobbing and talking, then the this thing. So that's why there is a change in meter here. Guru Nahatvahi Mahanubhavan Shreyo Bhoktum Bhaikshama Pihaloke Atvartha Kamans to Guru Nihaiva Bunjiya Bhogan Rudira Pradigdhan. Better indeed in this world to eat even the bread of beggary than to slay the most noble of teachers. But if I kill them, even in this world, all my enjoyments of wealth and desires will be stained with blood. So now he's answering Anarya Jushtam. Because what Bhagwan said, running away is, uh, it's not a noble quality. It's not the quality of a noble person. So he's saying, Gurun Ahatvahi Mahanubhavan. Are you telling me that Killing my guru is will give me fame. This is what Arjun is saying. Bhagwan said, you run away, it is defame. So he's saying, what do you mean? You mean that I should not run away. I should stand here and I should kill my guru. And killing guru, the, I will get fame. Oh, that's that Arjun, he killed his own guru. So this is what he's answering. And why? Mahanubhava, they're great people. Drona and Bhishma are great people. Here, Guru includes Bhishma also. Like killing my own grandfather, people will say he's the one, oh, that Arjun, that, they will not say he ran away. They will say, oh, he is the one that, you know, killed his own grand. What kind of person that is? Killing your own grandfather, his own Guru who taught him, who made him such a good archer? You think that will give me fame? This is what Arjun is now responding to Bhagwan's uh, word Anarya Jushtam. And he says, better Shreya, we have, we have heard this word Shreya, Shreya is better for me to beg rather than stand here and kill. Now here the point comes, begging is begging wrong? No, begging is not wrong. But who is doing the begging decides whether that begging is wrong or right. It's like any other action, action of killing. If I say just action of killing, is it right or wrong? It can be right and it can be wrong. So if a soldier is killing on the battlefield, it is right. It is right. How can you say if a soldier is fighting for his country and is asked to order uh, kill his enemies, he's killing. But if that same soldier comes home and then, uh, oh, I'm so trained to kill. Now let me just kill everybody in my village or town or whatever. Then that killing is wrong. So the action by itself is not right or wrong. Any event, you know, yesterday, I, I just remembered she, a friend of mine, she got divorced after like 40 years, Marathi family. Anyway, and she said to me, she said, when this tumultuous event happened in my life, it happened a couple of years ago and she's now ready to talk about it. So she came to talk to me. And I said to her, uh, you think that event is tumultuous? What about me? And suddenly she, you know, she calmed down. I said, event is an event. Tumultuous or not is your projection on it. Good or bad. Even you got divorced, man. Look at me. What happened to me? Then she can't. Then, so this is what it is. E action is only action. There's nothing right or wrong about it. it so begging, begging is an action. It is right also. And it is wrong also. So it is right for the Brahmins. The Brahmins who are meant to beg for Bhiksha, 
that means not like ordinary beggary but bhiksha and that's what we saw in the story of drona and drupada what is drona's uh, this uh, uh, draupadi's father drupad the king he says you ask for bhiksha i will send milk to ashwatthama throughout his life but drona is asking as a right so that was wrong because he was a brahmin he had no right to ask for anything he could have begged drupad would have sent, given him 1000 cows also he, he should have said i am a brahmin in bhiksha i want cows take 1000 cows you take because he was the king so for arjun he is a kshatriya so for a kshatriya to beg is wrong and now he is going to do the wrong thing he is not following his own dharma he says better for me rather than kill them is to beg and hatvarta kamans to guru nihayva so if i kill them for the enjoyment of wealth see that is also wrong are you killing them so that you can enjoy the king because he will say that we had said that before also that what the three worlds even for this one world i don't want to kill wrong that is also wrong argument is wrong so if i kill them then there will be guilt will prevail this bunje if you have uh, read or seen the uh, play shakespeare's play hamlet hamlet was constantly washing his hands if you remember i don't know i remember and he was seeing blood on his hands what means that not that there was physically blood on his hand guilt guilt was there in the mind so this is what here arjun is saying that instead of killing these great people it is better for me to beg so we'll talk about the great people okay so begging is wrong and secondly i am killing them for my enjoyment which is wrong he was not killing for enjoyment he was killing for dharma so that also is wrong so that's why this talking is coming from a rajasic attitude that's what tells us if it was coming from sattva it would have been correct now he is going to move into sattva but we'll see that next time and then he says guilt will prevail so now this mahanubhavan i will explain next time there's a few things that i want to talk about so we'll we'll come to this verse next sunday uh because again uh, arjun is saying mahanubhavan and then what is bhagwan thinking we have to know that also right because bhagwan is listening see there is a speaker and there's a listener speaker is saying with one thing in mind but is the listener thinking the same thing that's what we have to see we'll be continuing with this uh, topic this verse next time